Welcome in World of Technology. Fujifilm X-H1 Review For months there's been talk of a new high-end mirrorless camera arriving from Fujifilm. Speculative chat seemed to suggest that the next model might be called the X-T2S a pimped-up version of the X-T2, possibly with a few exciting features to entice existing X-Series users and those tempted to finally make the switch from DSLR to mirrorless. When the model name for Fujifilm's next mirrorless camera was revealed as the X-H1, it quickly became apparent that Fujifilm hadn't been working on a replacement or successor to the X-T2 after all. Instead, it had been focusing on creating a new camera to sit above the X-T2 as the piece de resistance in the X-Series. Fujifilm X-H1 Features Fujifilm has relied on its 24.3-megapixel X-Trans CMOS 3 sensor and X-Processor Pro for quite a few years now and we've seen this winning combination filter down to X-Series models lower in the range, including the X-T20 and X-E3. This reliable pairing of sensor and processor is once again used in the X-H1, and like the X-T2, it provides a sensitivity range that spans from ISO 200 to 12800, expandable to ISO 100 to 51200. It's no great surprise then that the X-H1 shoots no faster when it's set to continuous high shooting mode. A top end speed of 8 FPS can be achieved straight out of the box, and higher speeds can be achieved by attaching the new VPB X-H1 battery grip, or vertical power booster as it's also known. With the camera and grip set to performance enhancing boost mode, continuous shooting speed rises to 11 fps using the mechanical shutter and a hasty 14 fps when the X-H1S electronic shutter is deployed. Users get a stereo microphone input behind the side door, below which is a USB 3.0 terminal, HDMI output, Type-D, and a 2.5mm remote release port. Any users wishing to plug in headphones to monitor audio will require the optional vertical power booster to do so. Fujifilm X-H1 in Body Image Stabilization, IBIS The big point of discussion on the X-H1 is the implementation of a 5-axis in body image stabilization. It's the first X-series model to be equipped with a stabilization unit, which is made up of a 3-axis accelerometer, a 3-axis gyro, and a dedicated dual processor. Fujifilm X-H1 Body and Design When I reviewed the X-T2, I couldn't think of many ways in which the build quality could be improved. It felt strong, resilient, and handled delightfully with its booster grip attached. To accommodate the IBIS unit, the X-H1 has had to be built around an entirely new metal chassis. Early on in the design process Fujifilm decided to make the X-H1 the most robust X-Series model it's ever made. Fujifilm X-H1 Performance With non-stabilized lenses you have the option to turn IBIS off from the same menu, but when you use a lens with OIS built-in, the option to turn off IBIS disappears. In this instance, image stabilization is controlled directly from the OIS switch on the lens. The speed at which you are able to shoot sharp handheld images comes down to a few factors, such as how solid your handheld technique is and the focal length of the lens you use. It's a well-known fact that handshake is greatly accentuated with longer focal length lenses. It's therefore important to go into handheld photography with the mindset that you'll always be able to achieve sharper shots with slower shutter speeds using a wide lens than you will with a long telephoto. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe this channel, see you next time on the other R videos.